Oh, hey, singers. Gosh, I'm surprised to see you here. Ooh, that, that's the spot. <laughs> yep, I'm feeling good. But the real question is, does your voice feel good? Uh... Hey singers, I'm Justin Stoney, the founder of New York Vocal Coaching, joining you for episode 116 of Voice Lessons to the World. Today's question comes from Alexandra T. in Hanover, Germany. Alexandra writes, Dear Justin, after only about 20 minutes of singing, my voice starts to feel rough. How do I make my singing feel good? Such an important question, Alexandra. Right, everybody? We adore singing. So it's demoralizing when it feels tight, tired, tense, or just plain terrible. But today is going to be a soothing balm for your voice and your soul. Or to say it in song, It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life, it's a new life for you. Cause your voice is feeling good. That's right. Today we're going to make your singing feel better than ever with a little feeling good homework. Let's start with number one, breathing. Good singing always starts with good breathing. But what is good breathing? Well, you can check out lots of past episodes to answer that question. Episode 1, 24, 62, 83, and 92 should get you started. And quick singing tips 13 and 34 as well. But what is breathing that feels good? Feeling good. Here's a little secret. It doesn't take very much air to sing. The vocal folds, they're just little guys. Small, sure, but mighty. And let me tell you, man, they will go to bat for you, but only if you don't stress them out. Try this little trick. Take the biggest breath you can possibly take. You ready? Great, now let it out. Now take the smallest breath you can take. Go ahead. Hmm, weird. It's not very much breath, but it feels nice, very relaxing. Last step, take a good solid breath, let out half of it, and then start singing. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. And then repeat this process. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. And yep, the birds, the sun, everybody knows how you feel. Because it's that moderate breath that will transform your singing. So here's your homework. Repeat after me. I will inhale a medium amount of air, and I'll use a small amount of air when I sing. Awesome. Now, number two, the neck. Let's take a look at the neck. Now, Alexandra, this is where most people really run into trouble. The neck is where your larynx and vocal folds are. So in some way, we could say that the neck is where your sound comes from. That's why it's so important that you aren't stressed or strained in the neck region. First, let's talk about the biggest muscles in the neck, the, the sternocleidomastoids. Sternocleidomastoids. Take a peek into Sing Like Never Before for a second. Now this guy's really got problems. These muscles you see here, they create kind of a V shape in the neck when they're tight. So take a look in the mirror when you sing. You should not be seeing a V. That's the biggest one. Are there others? Well, sure. Tension might come from the stylohyoids, sternothyroids, thyrohyoids, digastrics. Gosh, you name it. But how do we solve it? Well, I need you to get thee to a mirror and figure out exactly where the tension is coming from. From there, try giving yourself a little massage in those places as you sing. Don't be afraid to get right in there. 
you'll be surprised how easy it is to part ways with some of the tension. Another option is to take some Stevie head circles. You are the sunshine of my life. That's why I'll always be around. Feels great, and our wondrous friend will be very proud of you. So now, your homework. Repeat after me. I will consider my neck when I sing. If it feels tight, I'll give it a rub, or I'll give it a Stevie. On to number three, the larynx. Now, how many times have we talked about the larynx on this show? Too many to count. But if you're new to this idea, the larynx is basically the home to your vocal folds. That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! So to keep your vocal folds happy, you can't have your larynx going through your chin as you sing. I might even say that this is the number one reason that your singing doesn't feel as good as you want. Your larynx is cheating on you as you go higher. So why don't we fix it with an exercise? It sounds like this. Feeling good. Now you know me, I'm not just pulling this stuff out of a hat. This exercise is really specific. That E vowel is our brightest vowel, and that U vowel is one of our darkest. So that's going to help you to drop your larynx and darken on the high notes. Plus that G is going to give you some of that compression as well. Come on and try it with me. First the guys, then we'll bring in the ladies. Feeling good. Nice job. Uh-huh. Now bring in the ladies. That's it. Feeling good. Uh-huh. That's it. Drop on the top. Excellent. You know it. Feeling good, uh-huh. That's right. And few more. Feeling good. And last one. Feeling good. Awesome job. Now your homework. Repeat after me. I'm going to practice Justin's larynx control exercise. My larynx is going to thank me. Thank you. It's going to be super awkward to be thanked by a larynx. Ah, okay, moving on to number four. Many times when our voices aren't feeling good, it's because we're using a sledgehammer to try to pound in a nail. That's right, we're using the wrong tool for the job. So let me ask you some questions. Are you singing too loudly and getting louder and louder as you go up in pitch? Dragonfly out in the sun, you know how I feel. If so, then try the opposite for a while. Dragonfly out in the sun, you know how I feel. Much nicer for the dragonflies. Or are you squeezing so much that you hear oppressed or even distorted quality? Freedom is mine! Whoa. If so, then try thinking a little bit more of a breathy quality, a little more width inside the larynx. Freedom is mine! Aha! Why, yes it is. Or, is your sound weak and leaking air all the time? And this old world is a new world and a bold world. Well, then think about your vocal folds coming together more crisply. And this old world is a new world and a bold world. Yes, yes, more bold. For more on this, look back to our last couple episodes where we found our ideal mix voice. 
That's homework for you, but also do this homework. Repeat after me. I will think about using my volume and compression, and I'm going to try something new. All right, number five, the physical body. Let's not make the mistake of thinking that the voice happens here. I mean, it does, but it also happens in your feet, your legs, your loins. So, how do we find this? Well, through an exercise. Now, you know I've made an utter fool of myself for you so many times throughout the years. And one of them gets caught in my throat. Disturbing the peace of innocent singers just trying to sing a song that contains L's. <laughs> what do you mean I should sing with an open throat? He's not nasal resonance. And I vow not to stop, but if I did this for you, then I need you to do something for me. And it's totally in the interest of vocal science and of your own personal growth. I need you to do an interpretive dance for me. All right, all right, I'll do it first. New York Vocal Coaching presents Interpretive Dancing with Justin Stoney. Now, before you say he's really putting the stone back in stony, I want you to notice something. My feet are moving. My knees are moving. My hips, my pelvis, my abdomen, my rib cage, shoulders, arms, neck. Doing this during your vocal practice will release tension everywhere. So if you want your singing to feel as good as a dance party, then... Repeat after me. I will choose my hardest song and set it to an interpretive dance. If no one calls the cops on me, I will have reached new levels of vocal freedom. Well, are you ready for just one last way to make your singing feel good? I know I am, but before we do it, here are some more good feels for your vocal journey. Sing Like Never Before is the new book by Justin Stoney. Get ready for a singing book that is truly like no other. For more information, visit singlikeneverbefore.com. For voice lessons or Skype lessons with the NYVC staff, visit us at newyorkvocalcoaching.com. If you'd like a vocal course that you can do at home, check out the Voice Lessons to the World Vocal Course. This 12-part program takes you on a singing journey from beginner to master level vocal exercises. You can find it at voicelessonstotheworld.com. Or if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at dailyvocaltips.com. And now, here's Justin with this week's vocal benediction. Okay, Alexandra and all, here comes the last and maybe most important aspect of feeling good. I'm sure you agree that singing ain't nothing if it ain't coming from the heart and the soul. That's right, we want you. Beautiful you, flawed you, messy you, broken you, glorious you. So the question is, why aren't we getting you? What's stopping you? What's stopping me? Could it be that we're stopping ourselves? Hmm, it's possible. I mean, so often our biggest enemy is that nasty old taskmaster that lives up here. And it's saying, you can't sing. You sound awful. And why is it taking you so long? Don't you remember what they said about your singing? You should just give it up. Why are you still wasting your time on something so stupid as singing? Go ahead. I dare you. Quit. Never sing again. Whew. I've been there, my friends. We've all been there. Why do you think I do all this? It's so that we can study together. Take a deep breath. Let it out. And repeat after me. I am not giving up on my voice. I'm not giving up on myself. I'm grateful for my voice. I cherish my voice. Singing isn't my struggle. 
Singing is my journey. And I'm feeling good.